Matthew 9, 21. Read it aloud with me if you have the opportunity. It reads, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. We're dealing with what if is a gift. What if is a gift. Felicia, this woman of God said something that changed the course of miracles. It changed the course of Matthew's writing in the Bible. He saw Jesus do a lot of things, but he had to stop and take note of what this woman did. And it all started with her what if. <laughs> oh God, tell somebody what if is a gift. It all started with her saying, if I may be but touch the hem of his garment. She was powered by the possibilities of what if they changed her life. Most people are stuck in a rut because they don't have the gift of what if. They're stuck in a rut. They're stuck in run of a meal mode. They're stuck in the same old, same old because they do not have the gift of what if. What if Esther could become queen, Mordecai said. What if she could become somebody great in God? What if this child who lost her mother and father, what if, and, and she has to be raised by her cousin, I don't know how to do hair, I don't know how to dress no child, especially a female. But what if, hallelujah, what I see in her, what if she could become a queen? What if she becomes eligible for the royal court? What if I could just train her and show her and groom her and show her how to watch somebody else that's on that level? What if is a gift? If you don't, oh God, have a good what if in your life, you'll never be powered by the possibility of maximizing all that you can be. If you don't have a good what if, you will never maximize the possibility of all that you can be. What if is a gift because it gives you a possibility to change. It gives you a possibility to change. No matter where you are right now, no matter how it looks right now, what if said it can happen. There's a possibility that this miracle can happen. I can't even testify about miracles that are manifesting all because I said, what if? <laughs> all because, MJ, I operate on the realm of what if? Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. What if I don't have to settle? What if I don't have to settle for this bad mess that I'm dealing with? What if is a gift? What if I don't have to say on my standards? What if I don't have to choose hell? What if God give me grace in my situation? <laughs> what if God gives me grace in my next decision? What if God gives me mercy? What if God makes me every withhold? What if is a gift? You got to learn how to do the what if game. You don't have to settle for what is if you learn how to be powered by what if. Oh, somebody caught that thing, Darlene. They caught that. I'm going to say that thing again. You don't have to settle for what is if you learn how to be powered by what if. <laughs> Abraham didn't have the children that he wanted, but he didn't have to settle for what was if he was powered by what. Oh, oh God. <laughs> he had to be powered by what if, and we go back to the woman with the issue of blood, and there she says to herself, within herself, what if I could just but touch the hem of his garment? Wait a minute, I don't think it's ever been touched on like this. This woman with the issue of blood, MJ, I don't think it's ever been touched on, the touching woman has ever been touched on like this. Oh, God, is it possible that there is power in the hem just like it is in the hand? Oh, God! Is it possible? Who thought 
looks like that. Somebody that is powered by possibilities. Nobody thinks like that. Nobody can fathom the possibility of the power being in his hand. I can understand if this woman of God said, I, I, if I touch his hand, if I touch his skin, but touching his hand, touching his hand, and he touching his hand, who thinks like that? Other than somebody that's powered by possibilities. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Her possibility thinking transitioned non-reality into reality. Did you get that? Her what if possibility transferred non-reality into reality. How in the world could you even think? Who would dare to think? I can understand if she said, if I could touch his hand, if I can just bump into his hand, or if I could just bump into his feet, because that's the flesh. There's power in the flesh. Electricity is in the flesh. I can understand if she wanted to touch an area of his flesh, but she does something that doesn't even make sense mode and says, if I can just touch his hem, <laughs> there is a possibility because the two are connected, that'll work. She's leaping, she's hoping, she's wishing, she's, she's brainstorming. Good God Almighty. She's brainstorming the possibilities of what God can do. She's brainstorming. When, you, when I was, I think, either in college or in the eighth grade, we learned how to brainstorm in English. They said, okay, when you're stuck and you don't know what to write, just, just write anything down on paper. Just write anything. And maybe one of them ideas will work. They call that brainstorming. Brainstorm. She's brainstorming. What if I can just but touch the hand? Maybe I may not can reach his hand if I can just touch his hem. Ask yourself this question. How much is not working in your life because you didn't think about the possibility that it could work? He said, oh, it ain't going to work. Let me just don't even try it. It ain't going to work. I told Curry a lot a little while ago, I said, one of my lawyers will be contacting you. Because I just met two of them, and they just signed a little deal for that, as I told you, about $130 million lawsuit that I'm filing against Anthem. Many attorneys were scared to touch you. They say, every time I go to them, they got deep pockets. They got a lot of attorneys. I went ahead and filed the lawsuit by myself. And after I filed it, they saw what was in it and said, I, I want to get into. I want to get a part of this. I want to. You got a case. I want to. I want to get in on. I want one third of this. I don't care. One third of twenty million. One third of ten million. It don't matter. We still come out multi millions. But I had a what if in my spirit. And if I listen to my mama, she said she must have heard me talk because I don't tell her nothing. She had that. I don't think you should go against that insurance company. She is not operating on faith. She is not operating on the M, the realm of power. She is not powered by possibilities. But this woman with the issue of blood thought about what could work in her life to make up for what wasn't working in her life. What can work to make up for what's not working? It's not working, Tiffany. I got some stuff in my life that's not working. So what if I think about what can work? Oh, God. I got some stuff that's dead. I got some stuff that's not working. What are the possibilities that exist that can work? I'm about to tell you something that should blow your mind. When you are powered by possibilities, negative thinking shouldn't even exist anymore. You know you power by possibility when you don't have time to think of nothing negative. When negative thoughts don't even come in your mind anymore, that's a sign that you are powered by possibilities. When you're not operating by fear, doubt, worry, stress, concern about what could go wrong, you are now powered by possibilities. Good God Almighty. When you're powered by possibilities, negative thinking has to leave. 
When you're powered by possibilities, what the world says doesn't matter to you. When you, now listen, everybody ain't on this level. Everybody's not powered by possibility. So you're going to get a lot of doubters. You're going to get a lot of, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't try that if I were you. I couldn't, I don't know how you're going to handle that. I don't know how you're going to make it. You're going to get a lot of that. But when you're powered by possibilities, none of that even matters. When you're powered by possibility, nothing else matters other than what's possible. Oh, God. Nothing else matters other than what's possible. To make your situation what you want it to be. By knowing all things are possible in God, I make my situation what I want it to be. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 82 and 6, I have said, ye are gods. Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. When you're powered by possibilities, you have a chance to craft miracles. Somebody shout, custom-made miracles. On what you think is possible. This woman with an issue of blood custom-made a miracle without God's permission. She didn't. Somebody got to text me there because I ain't in the notes. <laughs> She didn't hit the altar. She didn't come to prayer. She just thought what was possible and walked by faith. Oh, God. She, did, she touched Jesus. He said, who touched me? The omnipotent ones. Didn't give her no kind of permission at all. Who touched me? I snatched mercy from heaven. She said, somebody got, I snatched grace from heaven. You the one said we are all gods, children of the most high. I'm coming to God like a God. I don't ask permission because God doesn't do bad and I need something good. God doesn't do bad and I need something good to happen in my life. God doesn't do bad and I need something good. I know a lot of laws are against what I'm looking for, but I need what I need. I need what I need. I got, I got Trey first laid over there shout. She says, I need what I need. The woman with the issue of blood made no time for that it ain't gonna work crowd. She made no time for that it ain't going to work crowd. That ain't going to work crowd made sense. That it ain't going to work crowd was talking about the laws of reality. They made sense. What they said was logical. They did not lie. But when your truth is a miracle, and your truth keeps me back from my miracle, I'm going to pick my truth over your truth. Oh, God. <laughs> because your truth is powered by reality. My truth is powered by possibilities. Good God Almighty. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I told you, it's going to be a word they wish they would have heard. <laughs> listen. 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 The spectacular worked for the woman with the issue of blood because she was powered by possibilities. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. It is possible for you to get from where I'm God, what God is not given to you if you believe it. I'm going to say it again. It is possible for you to get from God what God didn't even want you to have. If you believe in his grace and mercy enough. David said, I, God, you gave me three choices. I'm not going, I'm, I don't want the storm. I don't want the man. I'm going to fall in your hands. Because in your wrath, I know there's still mercy. 
in your no, there's still a possibility of a yes. If I cry long enough, if I lay out long enough, if I call her your name long enough, you gave a story about this wicked judge and the woman kept on coming and she turned that situation around. He said, if you keep on coming, ain't no telling. She kept on coming. Oh, she kept on coming. Second Corinthians 5 and 7. She walked by faith and not by sight. If she understood Ephesians 3 and 20, now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, I'm able to ask or think. It's him. It's him. Jeremiah 32 and 27, she read it when it said, Behold, is there anything too hard for me? It's, I like that right there. That's power by possibility. Is there anything? Too hard for me. Now, God, you said ain't nothing too hard for you. You said ain't nothing too hard for you. All I'm asking for is your mercy. Is that too hard to ask for? Is you giving me mercy? Is that too hard for you, God? I need mercy right now. I need your grace right now. I ain't asking you for money. I need your grace and your mercy. Is that too hard for you? She threw it back on God. She had to make God think about his word, which can't return void. If you're going to cut me off, cut me off in the face of my prayer. Is there anything too hard for God? It's your decision. It's, it's your decision, God. You just said, is there anything too hard for you? I'm just asking for grace and mercy. Is that too hard for you? It's too deep. When you let your possibility be powered by the word of God, that thing has to come to pass. It had to come to pass. This woman stirred up her gift because what is a gift? And God tells us to stir it up. 2 Timothy 1 and 6. Therefore, stir up your gift. She was stirring up her gift. So many people are living in nothing because they haven't yet stirred up the gift of what if. They're living in nothing because they haven't stirred up the gift of what if? Ayanna came to me Sunday night. I need to have a meeting with you. Let me have a meeting. Pastor, we can't find no place. Let me sit in your mama's seat. So that's wrong. I checked and it came yet from Federal Express. My mama told me she's not going to help me. My phone is cut off. Yeah, is your phone not working for real? Is it cut off for real? I said, yes, it's cut off. I said, when you get paid? She said, Friday. I said, but you don't have a phone working. She said, no. I said, you want to do some work at the church? She said, it costs $117. <laughs> I said, I can hear a what if. What if you could pay for it right now? She's powered by what if. She don't know the sermon is coming. But girl, she's powered by what if. What if I go to my dad? What? That's what if. What if? What if I don't have to wait till Friday? There's a possibility I can get this thing turned on right now. I didn't ask her to come to me. I don't like to be bothered on no Sunday, especially after we get to worship it. I'm tired, I'm drained, but she fought through the doubts. And before she left church, the phone was back on. All because she was powered by possibility. Phone call on FaceTime five hours ago. How y'all not doing? I broke my Apple computer. I said, I'm 
Christ, you are put insurance on it when I'm buying it. Call Apple Computer and see the Apple Care on it. She called Apple and said, they got the Apple Care. They can fix it right now. It'll be $100. He's powered by possibilities. How you going to go to a God that got it? Scary. How you going to go to a God that can do it? In fear. You said there's nothing too hard for you. I'm asking you for something you can provide. Give me your grace. I'm going like Ayana. I'm coming like the woman with Israel. We have a relationship. Yeah, I done blew all my money. I just tied it $150 a month ago. I know I had $1,500 and this all gone. But I'm coming to you based upon our relationship. And based upon our relationship, all things are possible. You got to come like the woman with the issue of blood or Ayanna Jones. Listen, look at all the negative thinking the woman with the issue of blood had to overcome. Number one, it's a long way to where Jesus is. That's a long way. Hey, look what, look what, look what's in her head. Number two, the woman with the issue of blood had to overcome the thought, you're bleeding too bad to get out of this house. Number three, the one with the issue of the blood had to overcome the thought, it's going to be embarrassing. Everybody going to see you bleed. That's going to be embarrassing. You going out there in that crowd. Number four, the one with the issue of blood had to overcome the thought, it's too many people out there for me to reach Jesus. She saw it on the news. The news showed thousands of folks. She saw the news. I got a long way to go. They know I'm sick. Everybody in front of me. But she was powered by possibility. Number five, the woman issue of blood had to overcome the thought. It's already decided. I heard the crowd was already in front of you. <laughs> Too many people out there in front of you. Number six, the woman with the issue of blood had to overcome the thought. Ain't nowhere in the world Jesus going to want to touch you. Matter of fact, it's against the law for him to touch you. It's against the law for him to touch you because you ceremonially unclean. He can't. You wasting your time. Now I understand why she said what if to him. Because she was operating in the word. She knew I couldn't touch his hand. Because he's ceremonial. I would make him ceremony unclean. So then she went to another possibility. Well, it don't say nothing about the him. He said, if anybody touch, if a woman with an issue, that's what Elizabeth Dickens said, if she touch you, then you are unclean for seven days. She said, I won't touch his hand. I won't touch his hand. But I'll touch him. I'll touch his hand. Since I can't touch heaven, I'll touch his altar. I'll touch his altar. I'll touch his, I'll touch his representatives. I come to the prayer line and, and, and get touched by his representatives. She said, I, I, I can't touch his hand. Leviticus 15 and 19. If a woman have an issue and her issue is in her flesh, we blood, she shall be put away seven days and whosoever touches her, she shall be unclean until the end. I can't touch his hand. I know the law. I'm already in violation for coming out. Possibilities. I heard he ain't turned down nobody. I heard he let Pharisees come to him in the night. I heard he, he didn't even let Nicodemus. I said he even recruited tax collectors to be part of his prophets. Nobody liked tax collectors. I, I done seen him accept some people worse than me. See, when you down yourself, see who God has blessed that's worse than you. 
I'm going to say it again. When you doubt yourself, see who God has touched that's worse than you. God, you kept blessing David and David killed a man for a woman. I ain't never done that. David was worse than me, God. Moses killed a man. You used Moses. When you down yourself, look for people who God has blessed that's worse than you. That will power your possibilities. Oh, God. That will power your possibilities. I can't touch him because I'm ceremonial and clean, but I can touch his him because that's possible. Number seven, the woman that is your blood has to overcome the thought, you don't even supposed to be in church. You ain't supposed to be here. You ceremonial and clean. I'm going to say it again, woman, you ain't even supposed to be here. And she was power by possibility. Number eight, the woman that is your blood has to overcome the thought, ain't nobody going to want to meet you there. Ain't nobody going to want you there. Ain't nobody going to want you. Ain't nobody going to want you one with this, your blood. Nobody wants you smelling like that around them. Nobody going to want you around them looking like that. Mind you, they didn't have the technology in our day to cover up heavy bleeding. Mind you. Number nine, the woman that issued blood had to overcome the thought of people saying, you are out of order. You ain't even supposed to be here. You out of order. Seven days, you don't belong in here. That thing ain't even stopped yet. You are out of order. They got a right to stone you. Somebody gonna kill you, you go down there now. I'm telling you, you ought to be afraid because these folks gonna stone you or stump you to death. Number 10, the woman issue of blood had to overcome the thought, it ain't gonna work. Ain't nobody ever touched no him. Ain't nobody ever touched no him. Ain't nobody ever touched no him. It ain't going to work. You stupid. What you doing thinking that's going to work? How in the world you think that's going to work? You crazy to think that's going to work. But the woman with the issue of blood was powered by the possibility of what else? <laughs>